What's a car talk podcast? Hello and welcome to this month's Car Talk podcast where we bring you last month's news this month and uh, here as always we've got Bailey Prickett from the uh, Grand No the <laughs> on, uh, Car Culture YouTube channel um, of which this podcast is on so you of should course. already know that uh, and I am of course hosting this week and I am Matty from Matty's Cars I'm not very good Are at you? this am I <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we have a special guest, a world exclusive, in fact, because we have on the Car Talk podcast this month, not a woman, but somebody who is the only known survivor of a crash in an Austin Metro. So please welcome Errol Ackman <laughs> onto this week's podcast. How are you this week? Um, yeah, I'm okay. I'm a bit impatient to get my next car, but yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad to hear it, and we're going to hear your your full story. I get to know you properly, um, of course, later in the podcast. But I should mention that we are going to be doing the uh, the well, the kind of latest car news and mm. uh, some transportational opinion in there as well. So, uh, yes. what have you got to open the podcast for us this week, Bailey? Uh, I have a new Lamborghini, Matty, uh, which is exciting. Uh, as much as I love Lamborghinis, as you know, they've released a another Hurricane. Uh, from the many that they have already I can't remember how many Hurricanes there are now I think there's like f- six or seven different versions but this is another one um, and it's quite special actually Matty because it's it's called the Starato I think I don't know how you pronounce that but it's a V10 powered Hurricane that will go off road it's like a, a Dakar looking Hurricane which I think is fantastic um, you can see by the pictures it's very raised up it's got a high suspension it's also got a roof scoop and it's got an LED light bar. What do you think of that? I'm still trying to find it, but I will. It's spelt. Let me just get the spelling up. The it's S T E R R A T O. It's Dorato. I think that's how you would pronounce it. Um, but my favourite part of that about this Matty is um, it has a it has a roof rack as well. So that means you can do all manner of things possible with this that car that can go off road really yeah it's properly cool that is <laughs> that was that image came straight up but I thought that cannot be it but that is well that is it what <laughs> engines in it yeah it is it's still got the V10 what en- uh, the standard what engines in it yeah V10 um, and that's pretty much all we know about it now but that, I think that looks actually really cool I like the wider fenders it's obviously raised up the, the LED lights are very cool it's just a so what what are they calling it is it an SUV or <laughs> I don't know I don't, I don't want to get into that an, <laughs> an SUV for supercar owners I suppose it's just so it's just I don't know it's an exotic off-roader really isn't it an exotic supercar off-roader that's what I'm going to call it I think anyway uh, <laughs> on to uh, a bit of news here um, the new mini family hatchback is arriving it will rival the volkswagen golf um and personally i just think that mini have completely lost it um it does sit quite low which is which is good but it resembles neither a a, a classic mini or um a modern mini really Mm. um if you what do you think of that you know from the picture matty i think it's uh it's kind of going away from its roots slightly isn't it with the it's not even like circular anymore, is it? It's more boxy, if anything. What do you think of that, Errol, for um, a modern I Mini? I haven't actually seen this new Mini you're talking about, but I didn't mind the sort of new Mini, the two-door, because it was sort of a bit like a Metro, a bit, bit British Leylandy-ish. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, it was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It annoyed me that... They use Peugeot engines, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think. But, yeah, they do. Um, so, yeah, that annoys me. I just wish they kept the A-series, to be honest, but that probably would be far too old by now. Well, yeah, there's a, a lot in the news at, at the minute about Euro 7 and uh, electric cars, and uh, someone tells me that the, the A-series engine would not pass the Euro 7 stringent regulations so which which is economical shame. though that's really yeah. annoying mm. yeah 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 um 
So that's going on sale in 2024, I think. Um, and yeah, I think Mini became a bit of a parody of itself a long time ago. It was only a select few Minis that I actually like, which is um, the old the, the, the Clubman with the uh, the back doors. Yeah. Um, and that's it, I think. I don't, <laughs> I'm not a big big fan of the new Mini uh, or <coughs> the five door Mini or the Countryman or the Paceman. I don't I don't think they make that anymore. But um, yeah. Not bit of a, a, lo- a loss for me, Mini, now. Yeah, I agree with you there. I don't think Harry would agree, though, would he? <laughs> he, he certainly he, wouldn't, no. He loves his Minis, mate. Um, now, Matty, I know how... You know how we love SUVs uh, so much on the Bacall Talk podcast? Yeah. Well, there's a new one, um, and it is a completely new car, apparently. And okay. <laughs> it's got the weirdest name ever. It's called the Lucid Gravity... <laughs> um, wow! It actually looks quite cool. It's a seven-seater. Uh, the z- design is pretty well standard for an SUV. It's quite boxy, um, but this is quite interesting because it does 520 miles. And I think is that a new record for an electric car? I, it sounds like it. Sounds it. Yeah, like it, I'm, isn't um, it? Um, I'm on the the Lucid website now, and it's very cool, very swish yeah. website. But I can't actually get a good view of the car so we're going to switch to auto car magazine oh okay <laughs> i see it now um it's, it's it's currently like in very sort of you know sci-fi themed photos but yeah you know i think the design it's, is quite nice it hasn't got a so silly grill go- or anything like that it's quite it's quite contemporary no is it is it going into production or is it just yes uh i think probably next year i think it says 2023 somewhere here yeah and who who are Lucid? Let's see. I don't New actually know. It's, once again, we don't know anything of the cars that we're talking about in the podcast, so we have to research well, it as we're doing it. I'm not sure anybody knows who Lucid is. I, mean, <laughs> I know. I don't. I don't know who they are. Anyway, it's going to rival the Tesla Model X. Yes. So um, that's good. Have that, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> something. It's, it's quite. It's quite new, I suppose. If it. So it's rivaling that it's something different to bring to the table even though it's an SUV mm. which you've got hundreds of already but you know I think that's quite Definitely. a cool car um, from a cool car to an uncool car and from electric right back to hybrid we've got the uh, the new Toyota Prius I've got this as well which is um, yeah it's, it's it's good news for taxi drivers but really just mediocre news for the listeners Everyone of the else. Car Talk podcast <laughs> yeah um what do we think? Um, I don't think it looks like a, uh, a a Prius anymore, does it? I don't. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't I like it at all. I've seen it. Do you think? Do you think it looks better than the old Prius? Definitely not. I think it does. No, I don't think it oh. does. I'm quite. I I noticed in the comments of when I was reading the article, there was like quite a lot of people that actually liked it, but I just didn't like it at all. I think it looks sleeker than the old Prius. It does, yes. Um, but I don't know about the lights. Does, mm, yeah, it doesn't look as good as uh, Hyundai Ionic or an Ionic 5. Um, mm. it, it's literally just a car for taxi drivers. Um, it is, but the disappointing thing about it, Matty, obviously it's still a hybrid, but that's that's fine, but it only does 39 miles on the uh, battery. I don't know if that's an improvement from the last one, was it? Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like much of an improvement if it is, but uh, it's it's hybrid is pretty much old news really now, it isn't is, it? Yeah. It's just not a. Um, I'm surprised they haven't moved straight to electric with that. To be honest with you, yeah, it's odd that one. Taxi drivers, <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got uh, one mm. last story, Matty, which is quite uh, quite unique. Um, now I don't know if you've if you both of you heard about this, but um. You know, like on Facebook, you get these sort of groups for where you live. So you get like, you know, like a Facebook group with everyone who Karens. lives. Basically Karens, yes. Um, well, we've got one in Ascot, obviously. And you can imagine the sort yeah. of stuff that is put out on there. I'm not going to mention anything or whoever's on it. Yeah. Um, but I, saw, I was looking through Facebook, which I rarely do. But when I was, um, I saw this post. It was put up on Ascot People is what it's called. Um and it was talking about how the, a couple of years ago they got rid of the like Land Rover garage and apparently they were going to change it into a Lidl. 
Right. But now they're going to put they're going to change it into a Maserati garage and I'm like, "Yes." But everyone in the comments is like, "Wow. We don't want this. We want a Lidl." And I was like, "Nobody wants a Lidl. <laughs> we want a Maserati garage." <laughs> so I was the only one in that group that was just sort of like, "I want I actually want to go there." That's going to be on well, the main the, high street. The answer to that question is that if you want a Lidl in Ascot, <laughs> then move to a poorer area because <laughs> basically, this is, yeah. And I know from experience a place where everybody drives Maseratis, McLarens, mm. um, and failing that SUVs. Yeah. So you know if you if you can you can either live in a nice area with a Maserati garage, or if you want to see what's happening in the middle of Little that week, then move to Birmingham. <laughs> that's that's consumer advice again, once again. <laughs> yeah. Um, bad news this week. Um, have either of you ordered a new Kia Stinger? No. No, I was thinking about it though, but I, I didn't get around to it in the really? end. Well, the good news is if you have ordered one, then your order will still be fulfilled, um, but it is going to be removed from the UK lineup. Um, oh no. I didn't even. I know. <laughs> um, I didn't even know it was a thing, uh, to be honest. So, um, with that said, I'd uh, like to move on. Um, and yes. <laughs> I'm just swallowing some pizza. Sorry, they don't edit. Well, edit that bit out. But you know, I wasn't. I know what I'm going to say. Right. Um, yes. Um, moving on to some big news that we have um, avoided so far, thus far on this month's Car Talk podcast, uh, and it was news that um, came out just after we released last month's podcast, Typically. and it is the. Demise and axing another car that is being discontinued, mm. but a much more prominent one, the um, discontinuation of the Ford Fiesta. Yeah. Um, now I'd like <laughs> to start with you, Errol, on what you think of this. Are you? Do you care? Because it is a modern car, but you know what? What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are: I, th- I think the new Yaris has beaten the because they changed the grill on the Ford Fiesta. Uh-huh. The, the, the Mark 8 and I don't like it at all and um, so yeah there's that to worry about and then the other thing that annoyed me about when the Ford Fiesta Mark 8 was a few a while back they got rid of Z-Tech and I was like why would you do that Z-Tech was the best seller and mm. Z-Tech also was a good spec for somebody who doesn't want too much but doesn't want too little and then they replaced it with some ridiculous other one uh, so yeah, I think they've ruined the Ford Fiesta. So for that reason, I'm glad that it's being axed. But I liked the <laughs> Ford Fiesta before they ruined it. So and I like the new Yaris. Actually, I know that sounds mm. weird, and I never thought <laughs> I'd be saying that. But I like the new Yaris as well, and I think that could take on the Ford Fiesta. Mm. But the only thing with the new Yaris is the fact that it's a hybrid only. Mm. But that's the way the future's going, isn't it? So. Yeah. yeah, I suppose so. I mean, doing some reading on this, um, as well as, aside from the chip shortage that um, Ford faced during coronavirus, um, they haven't actually marketed the Fiesta um, at all, and um, not really done much to upgrade the engines. I mean, um, how do you feel about this whole sorry situation, Bailey? Is it the end of an era, or is it just, you know, oh, not I mean, interested? <laughs> I'm, I'm quite mixed on it, actually, but... I mean, it is quite sad that the whole, you know, the car itself, you know, the Fiesta is is going because obviously it's been around for what over forty years now, thirty four years, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. it's it's been like one of the best selling cars ever made, one of the best selling mm-hmm. hatchbacks, and that's it's for a good reason. Obviously, it's reliable, it's a great car to drive, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I can list all the good things about it, but at the same time you know in the, the in this country particularly with the rep you know it's the all the chavs are driving it and stuff like that mm. so it's kind of yeah i'm kind of a mixed on it i'm i'm sad it's going but also sort of like not relieved but you know what i mean <laughs> mm. i think for me personally it's gradually over the years lost its appeal um yeah, yeah. i mean i, I I'd, I'd never have had one as a first car cuz i think it's just too much of an obvious choice but that's just personal preference but mm. i remember when we when i was a kid my dad had a either a mark 3 or a mark 4 um but it was like the gaia model so it was all like it had fake wood inside and i, I absolutely loved that car and then it was replaced like the ford updated it by the with the like boxy one 
and then after that it's just got progressively bigger and yeah. just it's it's lost its appeal for me personally um and i think it's one of them as well where until like like with the old ones now they've all disappeared like everybody wants one um and maybe in the future when they become like a little bit more nostalgic um we'll be looking at the classifieds wanting to get a, an old one but f- for me no they just they're just too boring you know what i mean they do drive well but they are a boring sight aren't they i mean that's i think yeah. i think it's had its time that's the thing you know it's had a good run mm. for like 30 years so I think mm. it is that time where it, it, you have to move on. It's like a dog dying. You have to accept it and move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I think as well, quickly, we'll we'll go around the group and ask, I'll ask this question to you both. Um, do you think it's the SUV is to blame for this or is it taxi drivers? I think, I think the SUV has definitely got a big part to play in it because everyone wants an SUV now, don't they? Mm. They go. I think people's logic nowadays is why will I get a small car when I can have a bigger car? <laughs> that's, that's purely the reason I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that um, I think that it's about the SUV, to be honest, because and also just the fact that Ford have sort of ruined the Fiesta. I think uh, over the years it's just got worse. Yeah, really. I mean, it's complex. My, in my opinion, I, I preferred the Mark Seven to the Mark Eight. The only mm, thing that I had the Mark Seven down was the interior, the dashboard being so old looking. But it's other like a than bus. that, it was a good car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I've gone a bit off track there, but I think it's partly to do with the SUV and partly Ford's own unfortunate decisions to ruin the Fiesta in certain ways that has brought it to a halt. So yeah, that's my view. Mm. Good view. Yeah. <laughs> Having said this, though, um, you know that, the fact that they've ruined it and things. I do agree actually with that, but I do think the new, the the Mark Eight model is is pretty good um, overall. Having driven one as well, but that's to be fair. I've driven the ST, so you know it's going to be good anyway. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to focus on ah, Ford pun there focus <laughs> Fiesta focus say. moving on to our special guest uh, Errol <laughs> Ackman this week on the podcast. Um, before you tell your story, we're gonna uh, get you warmed up with uh, a couple of games okay. that we uh, normally play with our guest. Yes. Um, one is called Scrap Drive Own. The other is called Auto Star. Which would you uh, like like to do first? Um, drive. What was it? Scrap own something. That it's a hard one. one to pronounce that, but yeah, <laughs> Bailey's gonna do scrap drive own this week on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, Explain so, to the man, Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what it is is uh, I give you three cars, um, and you have to say which one you would scrap, which one you would drive, mm. and which one you would own. So it's kind of in the <laughs> okay. name, um, and I've sort of gone for. Well, classic cars, specifically classic British cars, Thank you. mostly. That's very respectful. <laughs> yes. Um, so the first option is uh, the classic Mini Cooper, the original one, the oh, uh, MGB, and the Ford Capri. Okay. Those are the three cars. Okay, I know. I know. The Mini I would scrap. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's hard. Straight the, in there. The BGT I would drive. Mm-hmm. And I'd keep the Capri because the Capri is actually on the list of my dream cars. That is a truth. That's right. That is an actual <laughs> fact. Yeah. So that that was a bit too easy, but because minis, well, I'm sorry, but they're too little. And I had a Metro, and that was too tinny anyway. I wouldn't yeah. want a mini. Well, the mini. I, I respect size, the mini. Yeah. I do respect the mini as well. I don't want people to think that I'm being a bully mm. to the mini. <laughs> but I know people love it. Anyway, I think that's no, a, I think it's a, choice. A, 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 I think it's a very interesting choice that you've chosen to keep the Capri and that you want to own one because I've, I mean, from what I've read, they're quite sort of blobby cars to drive and quite quite slow as well. I mean, what draws you to own a Capri? Um, my friend had one. Yeah, she had one. She doesn't have it anymore, and um, she she loved it, but she said it was slow. But it was one point six. So it depends which one you get. The f- That's the thing. Yeah. So I'd probably have a three liter or a two liter. Mm. 
Um, so that all, that kind of makes me want to have one. Also, I've just always sort of had my. I like Fords, but I I don't like all Fords. I like Capris. I like Cortinas because um, I've had a Metro. I wouldn't want a Fiesta really, so I don't want a small Ford. Mm. So yeah, I'd keep the Capri or a Cortina. I'd love. So yeah, that's my reasoning. <laughs> Uh, and they're good to drive, and they're, they're sort of big, sort of long bonnet. I, I like the design of them. Uh, yeah. Nice. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on to round two, then, of, of our games. Uh, I've got the next game for you, which is Autostar. Um, not to be confused with the magazine Autocar, of course. Um, and I'm going to give you three stars, celebrities, famous people... Um, and only one of them is uh, the right answer. Um, so the three stars that yeah. I've got for you is uh, George Clooney, Harrison Ford, and Clint Eastwood. Nice. Um, and the question is, which one of these stars didn't drive a car that was made by Austin? I'm going to say Harrison Ford. Because Ford's in the name, so he <laughs> probably didn't want an Austin. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is that is incorrect. Harrison Ford oh. did drive an Austin. It was an Austin Healey, um, more more specifically. It was. Um, I would have thought you'd have picked George Clooney. He was the he was the person that didn't have one. Um, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, actually, I couldn't imagine any of them people driving an Austin, but not really. <laughs> George Clooney, especially, I don't think you'd see him driving a, an Austin. But never, never mind, never mind. Um, we're we're not here to talk about who drove an Austin and who didn't get bogged down with all that. Um, what 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 we're here to talk about is uh, yourself, actually, Errol. And um, my first question to you is: um, Princess Diana drove an Austin Metro um, but she died in a Mercedes you drove an Austin Metro but you didn't die in it when you crashed it how how did that no. tell us about that how did that happen well the lorry there's a lorry basically who swerved I don't know why and hit me in the lay-by on the hard shoulder of the M40 so- the reason I was on the the hard shoulder was because my bonnet and I probably to be fair if I if I'd looked at it before and thought I need to adjust that my bonnet was a little bit high and I but all the way to Longbridge from my house the bonnet never came up so I thought it'd be okay on the way back but the bonnet release catch sort of loosened mm. up and the bonnet started flying open and moving around and that I didn't want to drive really with that loose so I pulled over for some reason I don't think I could fix it I don't know why because it's such a simple thing (laughs) maybe I just had a rushing like I was just doing it quickly because I wanted to get back and they say you should never fiddle with the under the bonnet under on a motorway to try and fix the car because obviously it's dangerous Mm. but I did try and fix it and then I called the AA and then after that all I remember is ending up in hospital and I was so agitated after the accident happened because I was apparently I was supposed to go in a helicopter to hospital, but I was moving around so much because I was agitated. So they had to drive me to hospital. So yeah, there's the story. So wait, so, so did a lorry hit into you when you were stationary? Then that's yes, why. Yes. Yeah, yeah, completely. And were you were you in the car or outside the car? I was. I sh- probably should have run out of it, but there was no barrier to stand stand behind or. Bull, bullard barrier whatever it's called um so i was in the passenger seat in the car i don't remember who told me to do that i think it might be either been the aa or something must have been the aa actually nice. um but yeah i was in the passenger seat of it if i was in the driver's seat it probably would have been a lot worse mm. yeah how did the lorry even hit you then if you were sort of parked on the side well, I was on the hard shoulder. He just swerved. He moved the wheel by accident. Oh. I don't know if he had a blackout or if he was on his phone. You don't know these things. They're not telling us. That's very, un- no very unlucky. Knowing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you wouldn't think it would happen, would you? No. You just, you just wouldn't at all. And it's, uh, it's not only a shame that it's a, it's a classic car off the road, but of course your, your health as well. Like it's just like 
I it's it's almost unbelievable, isn't it? Because you just you weren't even driving; you were just on the on the uh, in the layby. Wow. Yeah, and also people say to me, "You need to get your brakes checked because they're terrible." But the good thing is, I know how to. I did know how to use them correctly mm. to stop the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it wasn't even the bad brakes that some people said to me, "You need to get changed." It was the it was a lorry hitting me. It wasn't anything to do with my car. Mm. I mean, obviously, if my bonnet hadn't have come up, I wouldn't have had to pull over. But I didn't know that somebody was going to write my car off in the lay-by, did I? <laughs> no, of course not. I can't. It's you, you're kind of no. helpless in that situation as well. And this, really, what we've been banging on about on the Car Talk podcast for quite a few months now is it reinforces our arguments about uh, smart, smart motorways, motorways and how dangerous yeah. and stupid but they I are. I think it was a smart motorway. No, you weren't on a smart motorway, but I'm saying if you had have been, like, it could have been, like, you know, a lot, uh, even more worse, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, um... Do you know what this proves? Oh, yeah. What? This proves that Jeremy Clarkson's quote of suddenly becoming stationary, that's what gets you, is actually true. Yeah. <laughs> you should get that on a t-shirt, Errol. <laughs> no, I don't want to, because I'm not a fan of Jeremy Clarkson. You're not. Oh, oh no. No. You've come on the wrong podcast. It's literally <laughs> a podcast full of Jeremy Clarkson references Pretty all the much. way through. Well you you both are awesome, but I don't like Jeremy Clarkson, I'm sorry. So so you've you've recovered now, I'm I'm assuming. Um are you you say you said earlier you're impatient to get your next car. What what are we saying for that? What's it gonna be? Well, there's a long story about that. So just before my car got written off, I was re- driving up that M40 and I was in a really good mood. Part of the reason why was my friend bought an Austin Allegro, um, sort of impulse bought it. He didn't need it. And he was. we were going to swap cars. So he was going to have my Metro and I was going to have the Allegro and that was going to be it. And that was going to be amazing for me. And I was yeah. so looking forward to it. But So yeah, I want an Austin Allegro. That's the short answer. And I was going to get one before the accident, but now the accident's happened. I'm like, when is it going to happen? Mm. So yeah, I'm a bit stressed, really. So you're are you looking for one at the minute? Is that what the delay is, or are you just well, waiting for the right one to come along? I've been looking for one. I look at cars every day uh, since yeah. a young age, but yeah, I'm looking. There's one on eBay at the moment that I really like in Halifax. It's blue. And it's been restored, and it looks amazing. It's been on Project Nigel. I don't know if you know who Project Nigel is, but it's been on that. It was on that six days ago, and that video is on YouTube if you want to see it. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I've been looking for an Austin Allegro, but I'd like a Rover P6 as well, but I think that's a bit ambitious for a second car. Really. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going older and older with your, uh, with your cars yeah, there. The, really what, year, what, what year was your Metro? It was a 1984, but it was a Mark One. But it was like I think the end of the Mark Ones. Mine was one yeah. of the last. Yeah. Oh wow! So nice. I'm assuming then the 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 safety of cars like that hasn't hasn't put you off. I mean, obviously it wasn't your fault, but you're you're not more inclined to get a um, a car that's safer, or you're just um, you're not well, bothered. Well, I'll, first of all, I'll be a bit more careful with the bonnet adjusting, but I don't think that's anything <laughs> to do with the accident happening. Um, but also, I've got a thing to say about that. My friend has an Austin Allegro, and honestly, I, did, I wasn't crazy about them before, but when I saw her one, I fell in love with it. And the one thing I fell in love with was how solid it felt. Inside, the doors, when you open them, they, re- they feel like they're really mm. quality. I know that sounds ridiculous, but... Honestly, people call the Allegro an all aggro, but yeah. I think the Metro is more all aggro than any any Allegro because <laughs> the Allegro feels more solid to me. I know I know people have said to me they've driven Allegros and they're appalling and they're rubbish and this and that, but the the doors feel so much thicker and when you're inside it, it just feels so much more better than a Metro does because mm. I've been in both and I used to get embarrassed actually at shows when I with my little metro along and I used to go to walk to the Allegros and get really jealous. So yeah. <laughs> my heart is sort of set on that as a next car. Do it, man. That, that sounds good. Got yeah. to be ambitious. I know it's pretty <laughs> weird. <laughs> Allegro. Allegro. 
I think modern cars can be quite deceiving. I watched, I seen on Twitter a picture of a um, an old. I've been uh, looking for a Volvo estate for um, well, all the five minutes really. But um, <laughs> I seen a picture of a, a Volvo three forty estate, like the very one of the very first estates Volvo yes. ever made, and um, a Mercedes, a Mark II Mercedes A class crashed into the back of it and the whole of the bonnet and the front bumper is of the a-class has just crumbled and disappeared and uh, it's it's still contact yeah. like it's still touching the volvo the volvo bumper is just <laughs> absolutely fine and this is like a car that is like <laughs> 20 25 years older than that mark ii a-class so it wow. just goes to show really old cars can be more safe than we think. Yeah. Yeah, and also one thing I will say is I learned to drive on a Mark 7 Fiesta and I felt terrified in that because it felt so big you couldn't mm. really see out of it very well. But mm. on the Metro, I found it, I felt so comfortable because I could see out of it and also yeah. I wasn't claustrophobic in it like I am in a modern car. Looks, uh, the Fiesta Mark 7, it's not easy to see out of anyway, but yeah, the Metro, yeah. I just felt comfortable because I could see everywhere. The only thing really was the suspension needed doing on it. So oh, it was really painful. I would sometimes go into neutral over speed humps <laughs> and then still be in agony. <laughs> uh, there's a funny thing for you. But yeah, I, um, uh, I don't really... I want to get a car I like. I don't want to get a car that I don't like. Of course, and yeah. really... There's not a lot modern that I like. I like the MX-5, actually. The Good new man. one. Yeah, I've driven but, the new one. That's great. But there's not a lot. Like I, I'd like a Rover Metro. I'd like to see what it's like in comparison to mine, but I don't really want to own one. I, I like a Capri, like I said. I'd like a P6 as well, but I don't know if I can afford one. I'd like an Austin Cambridge, but again, that, that might be it. And that's also a bit old man-ish as well, and I feel like an Austin Cambridge is really... Frumpy, but it's a cool car. I like it, but it is a bit frumpy, to be fair. Mm. The Allegro is cool, I think. Errol, would you get a... This is, I suppose this is one of my questions, but um, would you get, like, say if you got one of these, like, another classic car, would you get a, a daily car as well, or would you just stay with that? Look, if I had money and space, yes, I would. But really, and it would be something like a bit of a shed. It would be like... I don't know, a Mark IV Fiesta or something. Yeah. Mm. But but they still rust. So, but I, I might get a modern car, but I don't know what I get. It would just be like a rubbish, or it could be an MX-5. I'd have no problems with that. <laughs> oh, I think it should be an so, MX-5. Yeah so, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, but I'd be picky, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in the market for a second car just because I want to keep the MX-5 off the road, as I've told Matty quite yeah. a few times. Have you, yeah. uh, have you sold your BM? That's it, by the way. It is. It's it's sold. Um, a a gang of Romanians came <laughs> to my house, woke up the whole street, um, and bought it from me for eight hundred and seventy pounds. So they jo- only chipped me thirty quid, which I was very happy about. I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to say they ni- they nicked it. Because they were like, they no, <laughs> wake up their old neighbour and then nicked it. <laughs> no, no, they never done that. But a funny story actually. Um, they uh, when they came to to buy it, they they came from Manchester and they said, um, okay, um, we're going now. Um, is the car insured? And I said, no, no, it's not insured. So they said, what? Well, how are we going to get home? And I went, well, that's your problem. You've bought the car now. And they were like oh can't you put it on this like the kid who was driving it looked about 15 and he was like can't you put can't you put it on your insurance for like a little bit little bit like to just till we get home and i said well no because i don't know you you might crash he was going i won't crash bro i won't crash i was going well how the fuck am i meant to know that (laughs) so they said what are we supposed what are we gonna do so i said why don't you just chance it getting it home so uh i sold the car on halloween the 31st of october and um, yep. they got it home, no problem. And I know this from the police documents that got sent to me. Uh, they got it home with no insurance, didn't get caught. Then they persisted to carry on driving it till the 2nd of November, <laughs> where they were pulled in Manchester and the car was, it still currently is, impounded in Manchester. Um, so, yeah, I got a letter to say that um, <laughs> I need to uh, I need to redeem the car 
Um, that is, it's they've only sent me that letter because the DVLA haven't updated it, the system yet. But um, yeah, um, they they uh, they got pulled for no driver's license and no insurance after paying eight hundred and seventy pound for a car. Yeah, why would you do it? You know. Yeah. So basically, are you going to get the car back then, Matty? Uh, well, we were thinking about this. We were saying this in work that technically, if the car is still in my name, even though. I have updated the DVLA, but they haven't put it into their system yet. There is a small loophole where I can go to the uh, impound place and say, can I have my car back and pay the mm. money and then just sell it again. Um, but uh, looking a little bit further into it, unfortunately, I've got to have the documents that the uh, Mr. Policeman has given me when he pulled me over, which obviously I don't have because I'm not Romanian, I'm not living in Manchester. So, <laughs> yeah. That's quite a funny story, to be fair. Yeah. You can tell me about that. That's, that's weird. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I've, I don't know why I didn't tell you about that, but yeah, that, that's that's what's happened to the Beamer. <laughs> uh, I should have just bought it, mate. Save you the trouble. <laughs> I have to say, I had driving anxiety before the accident. Mm. So the Sunday before I went to Longbridge and then I had the accident coming back from Longbridge on the Monday. Yeah. Um, mm. The day before that I had hypnosis. I know it sounds weird, but I've had it before for something else and it actually helped me stop worrying about that other thing. So I had it again mm. and I was feeling amazing driving to Longbridge after the hypnosis. It felt, you know, I, I the anxiety had gone and then, and then the accident happened. So. Oh, man. Because I used to get ridiculous anxiety about things like traffic lights. I think if they're green now, if I go through them, what if they're accidentally red and I don't see when I... So I have ridiculous or like embarrassing anxiety that wouldn't even happen, you know. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. if you go past an amber light, you, it's, it's fine. But if it goes red, obviously you don't go through it. But yeah, I get ridiculous sort of worry about things that I shouldn't worry about. So the fact that this has happened has made me a bit worried again well I'm not surprised <laughs> uh, yeah well any, anyone would anyone would be like that to be fair um, yeah. I've never actually had a proper car crash myself and that's do recently that. passed your test as well yeah I know touch wood <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you've recently passed your test as well so that, that can't help can it really yeah no and I've had two other little accidents that were my own fault one was in a multi-storey car park coming out of it and I accidentally clipped the side of my car, the wheel arch, and yeah. um, left a dent in it. That was really... I felt like a criminal after that had happened. Yeah. And then the other one was, I was going down my road and I was a bit... I had too much coffee that morning as well, so that probably didn't help. But I was going down my road and there's a car on the other side who I actually know, it's one of my neighbours, and I wanted to give them way, but there was a lady parked on my side of the road. So I tried to stop to give her way. And I accidentally caused a couple of little scratches on this lady's beetle. But I was so sorry. I was so embarrassed that that had happened. Um, and I couldn't stop apologising that day. <laughs> because I knew it was my own fault and I paid for the damage and I admitted it. And I didn't, I didn't sort of try and run away. Because that's not me. That's not something I yeah, would do. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah that, that was enough for me to be more careful I didn't need this yeah. as well this is a that's the thing you, you need some you need things like that to just sort of make you realise that you need to be a bit more careful I yeah. mean I've had I've had little knocks before obviously I've had the actual crash of my dad's car and that was pretty yeah. bad but um, yeah you just need things like that to just I suppose yeah, boost I mean, your confidence of it maybe I don't know if that's how it yeah. works <laughs> and that, that that accident with that lady the car um, that was awkward as well because I needed to get a new front bumper for my car she only had to get the scratches sorted which cost a bit of money but I had yeah. to get a new yeah. bumper for my car and yeah I, I had a tiny weeny dent in that bit of my car but it wasn't even noticeable I put the bumper on it looked great it was fine after but that took time and it was a bit, lot of stress mm. <laughs> but yeah anyway I'm happy to end the podcast now if you all want to yeah, yeah, it's, it's been yeah, great. I, think that's, I really enjoyed I've it. Got, Thank you. No worries at all. It's good to have you on. Um, finally, yeah, I've got a guest. <laughs> a yeah. new guest. Brilliant to uh, well, not not brilliant to hear your story, but you know, obviously, <laughs> uh, interesting to hear about your um, crash in the uh, metro um, and your future car uh, ideas as well. They are both ambitious and interesting. Uh, great pleasure having you. 
on the show this uh, this month. Um, so yeah, that that marks the end of our uh, podcast for this month. Um, Bailey, if you'd like to uh, plug your channel and social media before we round off. Of course, yes. Uh, now, obviously, obviously, Matty mentioned that uh, this podcast will be on the uh, YouTube channel Car Culture. So if you what's that called again? <laughs> Good one. Uh, it's it's car culture, <laughs> <laughs> not grand team. That's that was about a year ago. Um, yeah. Uh, but if you want to follow us on social medias, then it's uh, Instagram. It's car culture underscore yt, and uh, TikTok. We post sort of behind the scenes videos and funny little. I don't know. We're not basically not dancing. Some car stuff. <laughs> um, it's car culture yt. So yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's all from Errol, me. Errol, would, uh, would you like to plug your social medias? Everyone probably already follows you, to be um, fair. Yeah, like a got lot. You've a... got a few followers on. Thanks, mm. yeah. Um, <laughs> I've, got a victim, I've got an Instagram, and the username for that is victimeldrew4291, and I cannot remember if I've got a dot between Errol and Ackman, but that's my Instagram. And I then, don't believe it. <laughs> yes, exactly, and I'm moany, impatient Victor Meldrew. At the moment, I'm impatient to get another car. But anyway, and then, yeah, I don't think... I've got a YouTube, but I think that I've Metro Lad something. Can't run the end bit. I think it's Metro Lad 84. Um, but I, I rarely post videos on that. If I think of something, then I might. But, yeah. <laughs> well, the new subscribe. the new car might be the opportunity to yes. start. You never know. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, and finally then my social medias if you have liked my seamless gold standard hosting of this month's podcast you can find me on Matty's Cars on YouTube for more videos Uh, you can follow my Instagram uh, Matty's Cars YT and if you would like to see me pictured uh, dressed as Mike Myers on Halloween in between two females then you can follow my personal Instagram Matsgram99 nice (laughs) nice They get better every month, don't they? Yeah, they do, they do. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, thanks for watching this month's podcast. Uh, Join us next month for another one. Um, Yeah, see you later.